Hey everybody, what's going on? My name's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about lichens. That's right, lichens. Are they, are they plants? Are they fungi? Actually, I know the answer to that. So lichen itself is not a fungus, but a lot of people will refer to lichen as a fungus because it's basically a symbiotic relationship between either algae or blue-green algae and a fungus. So it has fungus in it, but it's not just a fungus. And lichens are so cool! If you haven't seen them before, you definitely have. <laughs> lichens are those pale bluish greenish things that grow on trees and rocks like everywhere. I've, I've seen them everywhere. I don't think I've gone a day without seeing lichen. Well, I have, but I mean, lichens are really, really cool and they're really important to have in an ecosystem because they do a lot for the ecosystem that they're living in. So for one, they contribute vastly to soil, soil formation because they have um, fungus in their uh, composition. They are actually decomposers. They are decomposers, so they aid in uh, decomposing organic matter and in that sense, they make soil. They also serve as a shelter for a lot of different little tiny organisms, even microorganisms, and they serve as a food source for uh, little insects and other things that like to eat lichens. I mean, I bet they're tasty to some, some animals. I don't think I would eat them. I don't know if you can eat them, but if you can, great. If you can't, don't eat them. Also, what I thought was really cool about lichens is they're a good indicator of a healthy environment. So if you see lichens growing in some sort of ecosystem, that means that that ecosystem has very low ground pollution, water pollution, and air pollution, which is awesome. I mean, I want lichens around. That'd be cool. I mean, so look for lichens. If you don't see them, you either they don't live there, which is probably very likely, or they, you, where you live could have some pollution. I don't know. Do your research, kids. But that was just an overview. So if you stick around, I'm going to tell you how to make paint from lichens, and I'm going to talk about uh, natural paints and what they can do and how to make them, how to find them, all that stuff. So you should watch it. You don't have to, but I think you should stick around because what I'm going to talk about is really, really cool. So it's been like two days since I went out and collected um, these little lichens. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to preheat the oven, my oven here, to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it's preheated, I'm going to uh, oven dry these so it makes them a little bit easier to crush in my mortar and pestle. This is a mortar and pestle if you have never seen one before. So I have a cookie sheet and a little bit of aluminum foil. Now I'm going to just kind of uh, set out the lichens uh, so they're not touching each other kind of spread apart basically give it the most surface area possible so it can dry um, as quickly as it can so that the lichens don't get burned in the oven also if any of the lichens have uh, any type of other dirt or different plants like moss growing on them I'm gonna make sure that I take it off because once again I'm extracting pigment from them so I want to make sure that the only things I have on this tray are the bluish green lichens. Alrighty, now once I have all of my lichens on this tray, it's ready to be popped in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour. Dry my little friends. So I just took these out of the oven. Um, the color didn't change at all, which is good, which is what we want when we're drying any type of herb or plant or um, fungus in this case. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna separate any other uh, moss or dirt that's left over that I did not get off the first time and then I'm going to crush it in the mortar and pestle and extract the pigment. So making natural paints, uh, whether they're derived from um, a plant or a fungus or some other substance that comes from nature, it's really tedious and it takes a lot of experimentation because depending on the method of extraction and depending on the plant or species itself, it, you can get a totally different color than you're expecting. Like, for example, last week I was crushing up some uh, rose hips from Multifloral Rose, and the, the actual hips themselves were like a kind of brownish red, and when I crushed them up, I crushed them fresh, and it made this fluorescent orange color, and I was like, whoa, where did that come from? And then I crushed up American Bittersweet, which is a red berry, a poison berry that looks uh, very similar to a rose hip, and that gave me, like, brown. It was like a really dark brown. So the berries themselves looked very similar, but when I crushed them up, what they had inside looked completely different. I mean, the colors are like, one's so bright and one's just like dull. I mean, I've experimented with at least a hundred different types of plants in the past six months. Um, and I've tried like at least 25 different ways of extracting color from them. Once you get it down, it's really neat to see all the different colors that you can make. I have a good handful of colors that I've already made, which I will show later. Okay, so I have the lichens here that I 
um, completely separated from any loose dirt or moss that was hanging onto them. So I'm gonna put it in my mortar and pestle here. And then I'm going to begin, it looks like this, I'm going to begin crushing them. And we will see how it turns out. All right, so I finished crushing up the powder in my mortar and pestle, and I then used this aluminum funnel, and I poured the powder into this jar. Uh, I used the funnel so that I didn't lose any extra uh, pigment, because it's really easy for that to happen. Um, and fun fact, this jar is a recycled balsamic vinegar jar. I like to reuse jars because it's cheaper and it's better for the planet. You should do it too. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to use this pigment and some type of carrier. So in this case, I'm going to be using hot water and egg, egg yolk as an egg tempera. And I'm going to show you uh, the different colors that it makes on paper as a paint. Lichens! Okay, so what I have here now is my powder that I just extracted from the lichens. It's a brownish color, as I mentioned before. I have hot water and I have egg yolk. Now these are gonna be the two different carriers that I use to create two different types of paint so we can see um, how different carriers and extraction methods have a different effect on the actual color of the paint. Right here what I have is my palette of all different natural paints that I have made over the past six months. I have mostly here are my summer colors and then I have some winter colors that I extracted. So in this little uh, palette buddy, I'm gonna put a little bit of the egg yolk um, in one and I'm gonna put a little bit of hot water in another bubble. I don't want to put too much in though because I don't want the water to um, overpower the pigment. You want to have a good ratio of uh, liquid to powder to make a good consistency. So now I'm just going to tap in some of my lichen powder. So now I'm going to mix these two. Okay, so now I have completely mixed in um, the two colors. So if you look, um, this is the watercolor and this is the egg tempera. Now egg temperas are actually used because they create a thicker, um, kind of glossier finished paint versus a watercolor where a watercolor is very thin. Um, and they dry quicker than oil paint. So they're kind of like a nice happy medium in between watercolor and um, oil color. So if you look here, this is the egg tempera version of the lichen based paint. And up here is our watercolor, our lichen in hot water version of lichen based paint. Unfortunately, they didn't make a blue or greenish paint as I was hoping but they did create a very rich um, greenish brown which I will definitely use in my artwork. And if you would like to know what all my other paints are, um, this section right here is all rock paint. So it's paint that um, I derive directly from rocks where I would scratch them on another rock and collect their chalk. Um, these right here, these four uh, very light ones are actually ground up seashells. Um, these two down here are fresh uh, plants that I uh, crushed up in my mortar and pestle and preserve them with apple cider vinegar. Um, as you can see here, this is American bittersweet as I was talking about with the very uh, fluorescent orange and this is um, another type of uh, poison berry, a uh, barberry. It's actually not the rose hip. The rose hip is a different one. But as you can see, they're the same color red berry and they produced a very, very different color. Um, if you look up here, these are my preserved liquid paints um, that I made in the summer. I preserved them in apple cider vinegar. And over here, um, these two sections are my preserved powder paints from the summer that I dried and crushed up. Um, they're the same ones except this is the powders. These are the powders in cold water and these are the powders in warm water. They make a little bit of a difference so that's why I started using warm water more. Now these right here are some more of my powdered paints that I dried um, in the oven and crushed into a powder. So this is cayenne pepper, this is American bittersweet, the very fluorescent orange that I just showed. This is calendula, otherwise known as marigold. I have goldenrod, um, Norway spruce needles, um, moss, mugwort, spearmint. Um, this is multifloral rose hips, the other brown that I was talking about earlier. And this is barberry, another type of poison berry. So as you can see, all different types of plants make all different types of colors and it's definitely possible to derive them. But remember, don't eat anything because I say that it's edible. Make sure you do your own research 
and your own identifying and consult your own botanists, your local, your local plant friends, because I don't want anyone getting hurt, but you can still love plants. Okay friends, thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more about things like lichens and plant paints and trees and anything that has to do with nature. So, um, have a good rest of your day or night. Sleep well if you're going to bed. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much.